Okay, so we've already talked about threshold ratio and gain reduction, as well as makeup gain and output gain. Now let's focus in on attack and release. Attack and release are two very important knobs in compression, and it's very important that you understand them conceptually, why they matter, and how to use them so that you can manipulate the audio signal in your favor. So let's start off with the attack. So let's come back here and to give you a basic understanding of what attack is. So we've already established that we have the threshold, right? We have the volume of the vocal track. And then when the volume, like on a louder note, when the volume goes above the threshold, it activates the compressor and it turns down the volume of the vocal track, right? So we've already established that. What attack does, so let's, Let's uh, go back again and use the analogy of the hammer. So again, we have the hammer that's acting as a way of turning the volume down, like turning the volume down. And then the ratio, remember, is a matter of how forceful that is. So, but then attack is how quickly that hammer actually hits the level or it hit, you could say hits the fader, how quickly it turns it down. So with a fast attack, that would mean that as soon as the vocal level crosses the threshold and it and the compressor activates, a fast attack very quickly, immediately just jumps on it and it hits it. So imagine if you're if you've ever worked construction or you've ever really used a hammer, that if you've got a quick wrist, so this is a very quick wristed thing, right? Just bam, immediately. Fast attack, bam. As soon as the sound crosses the threshold, bam, that hammer activates. That is what a fast attack is. Now, a slow attack is when the sound crosses the threshold, that hammer waits a little bit. It doesn't immediately turn down the volume. It just waits a few milliseconds or just however long you have it set for before it hits that audio, before it slams down on it. So now let me show you what that can look like. So here is this attack knob and I'll hit right did I just think twice? So if we go the, at its fastest, so that's just a hammer hitting immediately, right? Flickering light, my satellite, my satellite. Oh, maybe. So again, a key thing to pay attention to is this gain reduction meter. It's this yellow bar here that is giving you feedback visually of what exactly is happening as far as the turning down of the volume of that vocal. Maybe she's a, she's a thorn in my side, my cr So that is the fastest attack possible here inside of this compressor at 0.10 milliseconds. And so that is just immediately, it's that fast wristed hammer, just bam. As soon as the volume crosses the threshold, it slams down on it. Now, look at what happens and listen to what happens when we slow the attack time. Kryptonite, my kryptonite. I don't know how to fight this cause I'm usually all this it's all in the Do you notice how a slower attack time sounds more natural? A faster attack time sounds more aggressive and sounds almost more artificial. And I'm not even using the word artificial there in any negative context. I just but that is the effect that we are getting here when we have a fast attack versus a slow attack on this vocal. And so I would say functionally, or at least perceptively, when you hear a song, and if the vocal sounds more natural, the attack time on that compressor probably is relatively slow. And then the opposite is also true. If it's very aggressive, if that compression is really, if it's very much in your face and you can just feel like the vocal just in your face the whole time, the attack time is probably relatively fast. And so when it comes to attack time on vocals, I generally like to go between one millisecond at the fastest all the way up to 30 to 40 milliseconds. So generally, again, on a vocal, this will be my standard. 30 to 40 or 50 milliseconds is what I would call slow attack time on a vocal, and then one millisecond is about the fastest that I tend to use on a vocal. So there you go. That is what attack time does. Now, let's focus on the release knob. 
So the release is very much connected to attack. And if you're paying attention, you probably already have a, have a, have a good guess as to what the release knob is. So up to this point, we have the threshold, the volume of the vocal goes above it. We have the hammer, turns down the volume, and then fast attack whips it down, slow attack. It's you know slower before it activates. It doesn't activate immediately, but it still turns down with a slower attack. Now the release tells the compressor how quickly to let, to bring the hammer back. So you attack the vocal, you turn it down, and then the release, a fast release, as soon as that volume comes below the threshold again, then it, the hammer immediately lets go. Versus a slow release is like you hit the vocal with this hammer, you turn down the volume, and then you just kind of keep the volume down for a bit before you let go again. So that is an example of a slow release. So if we come over here, Let's just come back here and I will mess with this release knob so that you can see and hear what it's doing. In my sights, but what did I just think twice? Yeah. Okay, so that's a super slow release. That is two full seconds of when the hammer hits the vocal, turns it down, it just hangs on to it for two full seconds before it lets go again. So, but a fast release. Flickering light, my satellite, my satellite. Do you notice how jumpy this bar is, this meter, this gain reduction meter here? Notice how jumpy it is with a fast release. Oh, maybe. It's jumping around like crazy, maybe right? She's a, now watch. She's a thorn in my side, my Whoa, kryptonite, look at that. my kryptonite. That hammer analogy is really starting to make sense now, right? You're turning down the volume and you're just keeping the hammer down. You're just keeping it there because the release is set so slowly that even though the volume of the vocal has come below the, the threshold again, the, that hammer has not let go. It's still pushing down the volume for a full two seconds before it actually releases. And in this case, because the vocal is keeps on singing through much of the song, the hammer very rarely actually comes back. You can see it just kind of hovers, it stays there, it keeps compressing the vocal. And that's actually very problematic because you have to look at this from the perspective of, okay, what exactly is the purpose of a compressor? Much of it is to turn down the loud parts, those peaks, to bring the loud parts down so that you have the loudest parts and the quietest parts living closer together. The problem with the slow release is that all you're doing is turning the volume down. There's really no or very small differentiation now between the quietest part and the loudest part because everything's the same now. Light, my satellite, my satellite. Right? Oh, maybe. It is turning everything down. The, this meter, this gain reduction meter is never coming back to zero. So that is a good thing to keep in mind is when you're setting your release, you want this meter to come back to zero at times. You don't want it to just be super slow in coming back. You want it to kind of mirror the natural feel of the vocal and the dynamic nature of the vocal. And so you kind of want it to go along with what the vocal is doing and you want it to kind of bop around a little bit. So again, fast attack or fast release. Oh, maybe. And it's really moving around. Maybe she's a, she's a thorn in my side, my kryptonite, my kryptonite. I don't know how to find. So with release on a vocal, my average is usually between 30 and 50 milliseconds for the release time. Although that can go all the way up to this 100. I'm usually all in. Although I don't tend to go over 100 if it's released on a lead vocal. So with release, I'll tend to have it between say 10 milliseconds and 100. That is generally the range that I will use release time on my vocals. So attack, I'll go between one and what did I say? Like 50 milliseconds at its slowest. Release from its fastest is usually around 10. And then at, at its slowest is usually around 100 or so. That is my general ballpark. So I hope this video gave you some clarity as to what these knobs do, specifically attack and release. I know the first time I learned these concepts and learned the ins and outs of a compressor, so many light bulbs just went off like, oh, that's the compressor. Because when you first learn about a compressor and you first come 
when you first open up one and you try to use one, it's very it's a very mysterious plugin. You don't really know what the knobs are doing. You you just know that you want a more punchy sound or you want a smoother sound, but you don't really know what's actually going on under the hood. And I hope that this gave you those light bulbs, just this entire compression crash course. I really hope that you're finding it helpful. So we got a couple more videos to go. The next video is going to be really fun because I'm going to describe and compare the differences between a basic stock compressor like this and the more analog modeled compressors, which I love to use like an LA-2A or an 1176 style compressor. So let's go ahead and let's dive into that.